So Carol is finally happy in season four. Is it nice to see her smile? <laughs> um, so every season, Carol gets a new, I get to, as, as the person who gets to play her, I get to play a new side of Carol. And, and you know, the first season with Merck, it was just being completely overwrought and proving that she was the better of the two. And she probably should have been the, been, been the, um, head of the network and then the next season she plays that you know that um really frustrated lover role where she just wants to win at some point and then the next uh, just real frustrated and then the next one with Castor Soto who is just she there's a lot of fear and 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 exciting fear and um again very dysfunctional fear <laughs> like excitement fear and now I've never. I, I I was reading the scripts of this uh, this series, and I realized I'd never played Carol, who is constantly pretending to be happy and upbeat and perky. Pretending. I've never played her happy. She's never been happy in any of these scenarios that these writers have put her in. So. I was a little scared because I was like, what does that look like? I don't know what that looks like. What does Carol actually happy look like? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. She, I mean, and it's a really cool reason that she's happy. I'm so excited about this season because of that. <laughs> the sad fact is right at the end, she's duped again though. Is she too trusting? Oh, yeah. I mean, she dives... Well, listen. Listen. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on you. But she dives in headfirst uh, to everything she does. She gets an opportunity. She, she takes it immediately. And then she works out the kinks or doesn't work out the kinks. Or the kinks just take over and, and pummel her until she's, you know, in a corner. It's, it's, it's just... Uh, and it's not just her. She's really, it's, it's not just her, the other person in the relationship that she's, she's um, finding herself in. It's also, it's also she's got some crazy issues that she needs to work out. I don't know if she ever will. But I, don't, I just don't know if she'll ever be able to have a functioning relationship. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. She might, I don't know. <laughs> She's got to meet her match at some point. I just don't know who it is. Yeah, yeah. How do you think that she's changed since season one to obviously the end of this season? <laughs> oh, I don't know if she has. <laughs> she keeps making the same mistakes. She's She's not learning from any of those mistakes. I don't think she's changing. Honestly, at the end of this season, she will, she will have to make a full-on new... She'll, make, she'll have to grow. She'll have to change. She'll have to do something. Or, or, or else she'll die. <laughs> How dire is that? Yeah, I mean, she's gonna. This is this this is the season. This is the this is the um, the the point of no return, I think. And if we do another uh, series the, uh, in the fifth series, I really hope that they they show her in a different light, learning something and trying to change something about herself, because she's screwed up. <laughs> How? Was she originally pitched to you when you first went in to read for her, for Carol? How did they say to you, this is what she's like? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I, I did ask that. I asked originally in the first, um, before we even started, I said, so I get the idea that she's just everyone's best friend. And she's just constantly, whoever she's with, she's like, everything's good, we're all good, everything's happy. All, so she's constantly spinning. Uh, she's a great spin doctor, and she's constantly manipulating the situation so that everyone's happy. Everyone's getting what they want, but they don't get what they want. But she knows how to say it where they think they're getting what they want, but they're not. So, um, and they said, yeah, that's it. <laughs> 
And then I did the audition. They they kept bringing me Matt back and going through the process of you know what it takes to get a job. And eventually, I got the job. And and then and then we had to like do do a series. <laughs> we had to we had to create this character together. Um, and you know what they did in the first season, they wrote every script before they cast anyone. So when we came in to play these parts, we had to just really kind of um, do the best that we could to uphold what they had brought up in their brain. Then the sex se second season comes along and we start. I start reading it. And then this is the first time they're writing a character with a actor in mind. And when you read the second season and see where Carol goes and what she starts to do, I was like, oh, so that's what I put off. That's what I bring to the table. That, that's what they think I bring to the table. And it's been actually a real um, privilege and, and I feel honored that they, they care about this character and want to um, really invest time into her because the, each season I've gotten to, you know, just uh, make her a little bit more of a, a, a piece of it, you know, which is um, cool. <laughs> I mean, the show is obviously about network TV. Yeah. How many of these characters in the show have you seen in real life? All of them. There's, they exist. It's not an exaggeration. They're just telling the story. They're not making it up. They're telling the story. What's funny is I always think this this business I think lends itself to be more of a drama so because it is pretty awful all of these people all of these scenarios it's just sad sometimes you know uh, but these writers are so funny and so comedic and so they know how to take irony and turn it on its head and just kind of uh, be brilliant at like um, earning every character moment so uh and make it funny at the same time that's just uh that's their that's where their brilliance lies is to take these really awful situations and to make them funny it's like it's like watching a a car wreck but it's like a clown car wreck so you want to watch it but it's there's blood but there's also like white makeup and and big shoes and horns honking and it's it's really gross and sad and and you feel a little bad but not that bad <laughs> the the show is split sort of half filmed in england half filmed in america mostly filmed in england actually so what is the split then where where does it start and where does it stop <laughs> good i don't know where does it, uh, so the entire thing is set in Los Angeles, but because it's owned by the BBC and there's a hat trick production is the production company that puts it all together, and it's just cheaper to shoot here for some reason in London. We we shoot the majority of the the thing in in London, um, and it's crazy that you can watch it and feel like you're watching something that's set in Los Angeles. It's in Los Angeles and there's just key moments of like exterior things where there's the you know mountains in the back where we're hiking and the, the Hollywood sign back there or Pink's hot dogs and or the forever uh, funeral uh, cemetery like all of these key little um, um, locations look like we're shooting the entire thing in Los Angeles but we're not we're shooting in London and um, I don't know where it begins or ends it really doesn't it's that's what's creepy about it that you can shoot anywhere for anywhere and it's believable people buy it I buy it when I watch it I'm like we were there we were in we were at the Ivy in LA no we weren't <laughs> we were in a sound stage in you know Wimbledon <laughs> So what's the time split then? How long are you here in the UK compared to doing the bits in America? Yeah, every season is slightly different, but mostly it's been two, two, two and a half months here in London, and then you know two or three weeks in in LA. Yeah. Is it difficult to keep a straight face 
<laughs> whilst you're filming all of these with all of these comedians. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, it's uh, we and we don't. We we falter all the time. I laugh. Daisy Hagrid plays Myra Licht, who has gotten to the point where it, she just makes noises. She doesn't even say words anymore. She just has the. <laughs> she just. I can't even do it. She makes just. She just makes noises. She's impossible to be in a scene with and not laugh. You can't do a scene with her without breaking and ruining several takes like several not just one or two and i've tried i've tried to like look at her ear or like look at her shoulder and her ear and her shoulder are funny this she's impossible to be and then working with tamson we get the giggles all the time she's just this really like i, I just i i love working with her i mean and the material is incredibly funny. The, the lines that we get to say, there are just certain words that they write that are impossible to get through. So yeah, as, as committed and as, as, um, as professional as we are as actors, yeah, we, we laugh a lot. We screw up a lot and we make mistakes. It's a great blooper reel. Great blooper reel. You took about Tamsin and Stephen being in it. Have you picked up any British slang from them? Oh, <laughs> um, oh, I'm sure I have, but I. <laughs> the my my favorite way thing that you guys say is. Uh... All right, ready? Um, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? But you go, do you mean? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're not saying what you're actually asking. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? No, That's I mean. not a word. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, slang, I've learned a lot and nothing has stayed in my brain. I just, I don't retain anything. I just laugh and say, you guys are crazy <laughs> and move on. <gasps> well, what's it like working with Matt LeBlanc? I don't know. I never work with him. <laughs> Honestly, in four seasons, his character and my character have had five lines of dialogue and it ends in, go F yourself, Carol. That was his, la it's his last line to me. And then Tamsin, as Beverly, leans over and says, well, at least he got your name right. Because we just don't ever work together. Our characters are never, there's no reason for us to ever coincide. Even though we have, like, he was having an affair with the wife of the man that I was having an affair with. But no, we have nothing, we, we never, ever, ever work together. And in, in um, you know, we joke around where, if he's shooting a scene and I have to come in for the next scene and like he's leaving as I'm coming in and he says, are you, you're in this? Like we just, we never, um, uh, and we joke also that they're, the writers are scared to get us together because of the magical comedic chemistry that we would, we would obviously have. But there is really, that's the brilliance of these writers is that there's really no reason that a celebrity like Matt LeBlanc would know anybody at the network other than the head of the network. And I never play the head of the network. So there's no reason for him to have a relationship with someone like Carol Rance. Um, even though I die to work with him because I think he's brilliant on the show. And I've often said, I can't wait to get on a show together so I can work with you. Because <laughs> it's not happening on this one. It's crazy. So what do you hope will happen with Carol in the next season? Uh, yeah, I, well, I, I hope she, I, I want her, without giving away what happens in this season, at, you know, by the end, I hope that she eventually finds herself as, as, the, as the head of a network, of the network. I, w I want her to be the, the leader, and I want to see her and see if she's any good at it. I think that she would be, but she might really might not be. So that's funny too. <laughs> I 
maybe uh, I would like to see that and I would like to see her in another relationship and uh, you know it doesn't have to be a good relationship I just want to see where they go after after where they put her because you know I, I don't need to hold back on this she ends up having a relationship with a woman this season and what I love is that she's never been with a woman before I was under the impression that this is something that she might have tried out in college or something and then and then it just comes up and she's like, I'm totally cool with that. No, she's never ever been with another woman before. She starts having a relationship with the, this woman. She, this woman is amazing. Again, she's the head of the network so it all works out perfectly. But um, and yeah, like we said, it's the first time Carol's ever been happy. I love that they chose that too, that it's it's actually a really good, respectful, loving, kind relationship that she's really happy in, that this woman really adores her. It's the first time that Carol's ever been liked, <laughs> like really loved. Um, I, I love that and of course it has to go horribly wrong because it's a comedy and it just does because I don't know if she's actually a lesbian I don't know but um, but yeah it's 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 a great it's a great roller coaster of a ride for her and I can't I would love for that to just you know pick somebody else and let's do this again because I love playing this character I love that she gets to to um, try new things out and constantly screw them up. I love it. Just got one question left, and I've left this till the end. <laughs> I'm gonna get you to do some impressions of your cast members. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> because you're very good on the show doing impressions. Sure. Could you do an impression of uh, Matt LeBlanc? How you doing? How, how, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. What is he doing? He just, um, he doesn't ever care about anything. So you just basically have to halfway close your eyes and go, oh, man, whatever. Is that good? <laughs> <No. Yeah. laughs> Next one. <laughs> Beverly Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, really? <laughs> she, uh, really? <laughs> she does that a lot. She does high pitched mm's. Sean Lincoln. He's impossible. Um, what does he do? Oh, he does. He does like weird faces. Like <laughs> his face is like Gumby. So it just kind of he. he I can't. No, move. Go on. <laughs> this is really hard. This is a lot harder than I thought. Mert Lapidus. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, come here, give me a hug. It's that he does this thing where he, <laughs> he backs his chin all the way up as far as he can go. Ah! Yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> this is so awful. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to offend any of you. <laughs> Last one. Yeah. Myra. Whew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's something like that. <laughs> really hard. <laughs> They're all so amazing, right? So it's kind of hard to get anywhere near their brilliance. <laughs>